So let's try to understand from a theoretical point of view why this uh, drowning can happen to isolated platform and why is this a problem that is specific to isolated platform. So let's start with an example where, where we have a low stand. So you see the low stand wedge and we have the antecedent surface, which is the top of the previous high stand. Um, I've always used previous high stand as my antecedent surface for examples, however, when those systems start to form in the middle of, of an ocean, the first surface they attach themselves to is any topographic high. So that can be a volcanic high, that can be a basement block that's tilted, that's the case for the Bahamas, for instance. So this is not necessarily always a, um, a previous high stand. But in this case, let's say it's a previous high stand. So we have the low stand wedge. And then this is followed by, of course, a sea level rise. So we have the TST, everything's fine in this case. The TST then covers the top of the platform, can keep up with base level rise. That means that then we switch, we have a, this maximum flooding surface, we switch to the high stand and we go to maximum high stand. And you can see everything's okay for that system because the production rate of carbonate far exceeds the increase in, uh, in accommodation, which means that the system aggrades and prograde's. But now this of course could go on for many cycles. You could keep piling up carbonates on top of uh, this system for a very long time. And in fact, in the Bahamas, it's been going on for millions of years. But now we're gonna look at a different example. So let's say we have a base level uh, shift and we have a low stand and we have a following that we have a, a, a bit more of a low stand, so another low stand wedge. And now, for argument's sake, let's say that the condition in the water column have changed. Maybe the water's colder, maybe the water's more turbid. It doesn't really matter what it is. The point is those carbonates now, during the next high stand, are no longer producing at their maximum capacity. And the implication then is that the carbonates cannot feel accommodation. Now, these are autotrophs, so they need light to grow. So what the colonies of corals or other organi organisms will do is they will colonize preferentially the higher grounds on the, press, on the antecedent surface. So you will end up with a narrower band of deposition and as sea level keeps rising, the carbonates are left behind. They cannot feel accommodation. So the distance between them and sea level is increasing. So that means there is less light penetrating down to where the carbonates are, which means that their production rate is even lower than it used to be at each cycle. And the only way these carbonates can survive for a while is by retreating to the higher ground and producing less sediment. So you end up with each one of these cycles being smaller and smaller until you reach the final cycle where you only have production at the apex of what is left of that carbonate system. And at that point, the carbonates give up because there's no longer enough light penetrating to allow them to survive. And if you look at this picture, this gives you a nice conical shape. This is why a lot of carbonate reservoirs um, offshore, notably in Sarawak, look like pinnacle cones, you know, pinnacle shaped. It's because they are drowned systems. So the carbonates usually, they form a broad shelf when everything goes well. But when they start to uh, no longer be able to keep up with basal level rise, you end up with this progressive conical shape being uh, formed. And then at the top of this, you have a drowning unconformity. Now, this is only possible on isolated platform. If you were attached to a continent, there's always a shallower ground higher up. You can always follow the, the shoreline and have carbonate production during the TST and then the subsequent HST closer from where the dry land is. But on an isolated platform, if conditions change and you can no longer keep up with sea level rise, there's nowhere to hide and the carbonates end up drowning. So that brings me to a few conclusions. So first of all, the Bahamas are often used as a model for every or all isolated platform. There's a lot of benefit to doing this. There's a lot of, of uh, transferable learning we can bring from the Bahamas to other systems, but be aware that your particular system could be different if the organisms 
producing carbonates in your systems are very different to modern corals. During the LST, we said that karstification is the norm on these isolated platforms because they grow in humid conditions, so there's a lot of rainfall, but you can also find turbidite and mass transport um, deposits. During the TST and HST, you start to form a, an asymmetry on the platform where you have in the windward side, preferentially reefs growing because of the, the clean waters. And on the leeward side, where all the sediments are washed, you tend to have more sandy deposits, either oolitic sand or skeletal sand. But of course you can have reefs as well, but they're less well um, developed. And um, one characteristic of those isolated platform of the tea factory is that drowning is possible because there is nowhere to hide for carbonates if they cannot keep up with rates of accommodation change. Eventually they have to give up. That's it. And in the next class, we'll try to see what happens to ramps in humid condition throughout this uh, sea level cycle. Mm -hmm.